Hi guys, welcome. My name's Lori Siegel. Um, I've been covering technology for nearly a decade, which is, as you guys probably know, a very long time in tech years. And I had the opportunity at the beginning of my career to cover tech during what I'd like to call the I think you're crazy period, where I would sit with founders and they would tell me their ideas and I would say, that's never gonna happen, that's crazy. I remember sitting with the CEO of Uber years and years ago and him telling me, you know, we're gonna order rides on our phones and a, and a car's gonna show up and we're gonna get into strangers' cars. And I was like, no, you're crazy. Um, I was wrong. Fast forward all these years later, um, everything has changed. I think it starts with those ideas and industries change. Uh, what's fascinating to me right now is car companies are becoming technology companies and vice versa. The competitive landscape in all over has completely changed. I was recently in Silicon Valley sitting down with a bunch of folks and we were talking about the future of transportation, one where folks might not necessarily own a vehicle. They talked about wanting to own transportation, uh, which is particularly interesting when it comes to today's announcement and what they're announcing. It's a shift in many ways in a mindset. And because cities are completely evolving, I think you know, there's this idea of multimodal mobility, you know, using different modes of transportation uh, to get to different places and do it very efficiently and seamlessly and with your smartphone. Being able to drive yourself using Drive Now or, you know, have someone else drive you using My Taxi or whatever service you're going to use. Maybe it's public transit part of the way and then you're taking car sharing if this isn't my thing, but maybe a scooter. <laughs> you know, I think people want options and I think the digital generation, they want to be able to choose and choose quickly and efficiently from their smartphones. And because I've spent a lot of time covering disruptors, I've also spent a lot of time covering the legacy companies and the industries that try to fight the change that, in my opinion, is inevitably coming. Um, in my experience in tech, I think it's the ones that adapt and that evolve and don't necessarily try to fight it uh, that succeed. So that brings me to today, Daimler and BMW, the partnership. Uh, I know it's kind of, people know about it and people have been talking about it for a little bit, but I, you know, when they approached me and they talked to me about it, I thought, well, that's an interesting and odd pairing, two historically competitive companies teaming up. But I think you know, to compete in this landscape and with the current tech environment, it's a, a very interesting partnership. And also, in my experience, if, at first, I think it's a little bit crazy, like I did with Uber. That might mean you're onto something. Um, and I want to get to bringing everyone up and introducing what it, what it is, but I'll just say one thing. Um, from covering tech's progress over the last decade, I think we're in a very, very specific moment when it comes to technology. I think there's a crisis of confidence uh, when it comes to big tech. If you look in the last couple of years, there have been privacy scandals, a lot of folks wondering what's happening to our data. There are concerns about tech's growing power and tech's influence. And I think there are some major trust issues that are being ironed out at this current moment in technology. And with that, there's also a huge opportunity uh, for companies and well-established brands uh, that have history and who have spent decades trying to build user trust to innovate and not look to just you know, own the car space, but also take a stab at the transportation space as a whole. And I think it starts with understanding the future. Um, so with that, we have a video about this partnership being announced today, so take a look. You might be seated in the present, but you are witnessing history. BMW and Daimler, two giants in the automobile sector who brought personal freedom to the world, join together to give the world personal freedom once again. At this very moment, the expertise of our 12 companies unite under one flag. We are the uncompromising creators of a new sustainable mobility service ecosystem that continues to offer all mobility services. With one click, we offer easy access to a fleet of more than 20,000 vehicles in more than 30 cities worldwide. With one click, we offer access to more than 100,000 charge points, which makes us the world's largest public charging service. With one click, our customers have easy access to ticketless and cashless parking worldwide. With one click, we give you access to a mobility as a service platform with mobility budget. With one click in our apps, 
you can approach drivers in Europe and Latin America. With one click, more than 60 million customers have access to our mobility ecosystem. Join us, the new way of urban mobility. Your personal freedom, now. So, I think if I'm kind of reading between the lines that this isn't a, a small startup, this is uh, a mobility provider, it's a larger platform. So, obviously I know we have a lot of questions on how logistically this is going to work and what's happening behind the scenes with the partnership. Um, so, please join me in welcoming the CEOs of the mother company, uh, Dieter Zetsche and Harold Kruger. Come on up. Thank you. guys, thanks for being here. Um, I read a headline that said, uh, enemies with benefits. So I just have to start out by saying that headline. I thought that was great. Um, so <laughs> this is a pretty atypical partnership. Two companies who, as I mentioned, you guys have historically competed. Um, walk us through it. How did it come about? Well, um, quite obviously, we are strong competitors, and not just historically, as you said. <laughs> and uh, I think that was one of our strengths, that we're just sitting at each other's doorstep and challenging each other all the time. We respect each other, but we fight for the customers, and this makes us, has made us better companies for decades. And the benefit is with the customer, obviously, and this will not change. This will continue, of course. But at the same time, time is changing. And uh, there are people who are not in the first place interested in car ownership, but in mobility, um, individual mobility, on demand. And that's where both companies and the individuals came to the conclusion that this is a field where we can be stronger together than separately. And that's where we started. Yeah, I, I see it as a great day today, really, launching a new combined company yeah, uh, on the future of mobility. And I mean, everyone was looking at the other side and saw some strengths. Yeah? Uh, from my perspective, I was interested in my taxi, for example. But I believe that we were quite good on the charging and digital parking side. And uh, as we had started the discussions in a, in a good mood, I would say, really it was good professionalism, with emotions. Uh, we, we were discussing deeper and deeper and found out that we can combine our strengths to become a, a champion. This is the vision, and I think this is what is today all about. For all my associates, for all the people in the teams, it's an absolutely exciting day. And by the way, I would like to thank all the team members. It was not always easy. <laughs> yeah, and one or the other conflict we both needed to solve. Uh, but today uh, is, is very exciting for all of our associates to start this new yeah, mobility solutions uh, provider now here in Berlin, which is an exciting city, by the way. Great, so it's gonna be in Berlin. It's, the headquarter will be in Berlin. Great. Uh, I mean, it's very attractive for young people. It's attractive internationally. Mm -hmm. And we thought we needed to create something new, which is not right good in Stuttgart or Munich. I mean, both are lovely cities. But mm -hmm. uh, definitely, if you would like to have a new spirit, a new team, a new task, it's good to start at a new location, and Berlin is a perfect place for it. Mm. And I, I can assure you, we both were in the opinion that Berlin is the right thing for do, doing the new headquarter for this operation. So talk us through what exactly do you guys have planned? Well, um, as Sarah just said, of course, we were looking at some uh, strengths in this field at the BMW side as well, like charging, like parking. And um, we thought we have a lot of complementary strength here. And we wanted, and we want to build a unique company which offers basically all the uh, mobility services uh, which are around in this point of time. This uh, starts uh, with a car, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, it continues with charging, with parking, and then it goes to the mobility on demand uh, from uh, ride hailing to uh, sharing uh, up to um, the, the intermodal um, possibilities which we offer as well and with that by today we already have 60 million customers so we are a startup but a very unique startup which is starting from a position of strength from a market leadership position in Europe 
uh, in most of these fields. And uh, on that basis, we think uh, growth is ahead of us and we have uh, the, the sky as a limit. Yeah, and to give you maybe one idea how this could look like, yeah? If a journalist or like yourself would fly in from, from LA, for example, that person or that journalist could drive to the airport. Uh, the car is already having a reserved <coughs> parking space uh, via the app, via the button. And we would book the flight before for you. You would arrive, you would have maybe a car sharing offer here, and you would go to the hotel, you can charge the car already. So we would offer the customer a complete service for mobility, mm. and hassle-free, and emotional, and with some fantastic products for sure. And so break it down, who contributes to what? Obviously it's an interesting pairing. Well, that's basically history. Uh, yes, we had uh, strengths which were not the same, certainly in the area of sharing. Uh, both of us, with a little uh, timing in the start, uh, offered similar, uh, to some extent in separate cities, to some extent in the same city. Uh, but there, now with all together 30 cities and 20,000 cars, uh, we have a very, very strong basis, the, the biggest one and the strongest one in this industry. Um, as we said before, probably in charging and parking, uh, there was more build up or certainly more build up uh, on the BMW side before. Uh, on the uh, ride hailing side, uh, there's certainly more, which has been uh, with about uh, 21 million customers built up uh, on their uh, Daimler side, but this doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Now it's one company and it's our mutual objective uh, to become the, the strongest, best and best offer to the customer, of course, which is always in the center. Um, and we want to grow fast. Uh, we have uh, given all the five verticals a uh, very strong equity base with together a billion euro combined. <clears throat> and this is a position of strength uh, with the 60 million customers already, where we now can strive for um, leadership in many areas. Yeah, and the importance of that business, I mean, we have five verticals, yeah, parking, ride hailing, charging, uh, and, and these five are, will be very independent businesses. Our idea is definitely that we're not driving it from the headquarters. And the entrepreneurs, the CEOs of the companies are driving the business as fast as possible with growth, profitable growth, uh, is, is clearly one focus on this one. And we would like to give them the freedom to operate because if you would like to be successful in the mobility solutions business, you must be fast, you must grow, you must have scalable operations, you need standards, and that's the spirit we would like to give to the teams. And that's what we clearly accept, uh, expect as partners. And the other one is uh, we will globally can operate quite successfully as our operations are all over the world already. Mm -hmm. so, well, so it's a good, good, exciting time. Doing a little logistics here, then how, how is it gonna be working with management, um, you know, given you know, two different companies and what you guys have already said. Logistically, how will the management decisions be made? I mean, I think Harald already said it. Um, we are the shareholders. Yeah. And we want to set the framework, the financial strength uh, for these five verticals to operate successfully. We do not want to interfere in the business at all. Um, and uh, we assume that they will always find a way uh, to solve the potential challenges or issues. Um, I think it was a very good example when we started and discussed uh, their positions. And there was no discussion, okay, everybody has to have the same amount of people. It didn't matter. We were looking for the best uh, people to run, to accompany the, the leaders in the different uh, five verticals. And I'm, I'm very sure we came up with a very, very promising uh, management team now. And this same applies for the teams altogether in this exciting location here in Berlin. And um, now we are just uh, waiting for great results to, to happen. Uh, of course, uh, we will have shareholder meetings, and of course, there will be strategic questions which we have to discuss. And of course, uh, when we strive for profit and growth, we know that in this area, for some point of time, growth is mandatory. So you might have to invest and accept uh, less profitability for a certain period of time. But ultimately, of course, we want to make money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The idea is really uh, to have a clear framework, but then having every freedom as possible to be fast, to be speedy, to be successful, to learn from things which go wrong in this business, and uh, to explore the synergies and to work on the business models. 
And that spirit was from the first day onwards. Absolutely. And we say we don't want to overcome this one with our big headquarters. And then it will be slow and will be not fast enough. And, 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 and we are missing then maybe the entrepreneurial spirit. And that's what we would like to build into the five verticals. And we have clear expectations by the management team that they deliver. <laughs> and I think there's something very unique. Of course, there are the Ubers of this world and there are other big players, no doubt. And we are not the biggest in any co every continent in every uh, one of the verticals. But I think nobody has all these businesses in one entity. And while we are very clear in setting these five verticals independently up, we know that ultimately uh, we will see a world where all of that will merge, yeah. where we'll have electric vehicles, uh, where you will have autonomous vehicles, where there's no difference between ride hailing and sharing anymore because it's obviously without the driver the same thing. Um, and uh, we are set up by today to accompany and, and lead the transformation in this new world. And there, ultimately, the five verticals will melt as well. But this is some years down the road, but we have the setup today. Yeah, and th this is a little bit also our joint vision. It's all about technology leadership. Yeah? It's all about speed. It's all about uh, customer orientation. Yeah? And Laurie, we would like you to be a happy customer in a year's <laughs> time with our new business. OK, so I guess this brings me to my next question. Um, putting on my Silicon Valley hat, by being the one that makes the car, what advantage do you have over tech companies? I mean, how does your experience provide an advantage over, say, the Ubers of the world, or Waymo? What, what would you say is the competitive edge? Perhaps you already mentioned one in your introduction. I mean, I know there's a diesel uh, discussion, in particularly in Germany. But still, uh, we are around, both of us, for more than 100 years. Um, and um, our brands are the accumulated experience of customs over this long period of time. And this has built a tremendous uh, foundation of trust. And while our customers trust in the safety our cars provide for their lives, they trust as well in the safety of their data in our hands. And that, I think, is an inherent advantage which we can offer um, in comparison, I, by no means I want to be critical about uh, the tech companies, but they have this shorter history and less chance to build up this, uh, this uh, basis foundation of trust. And this is not technical, but I think that's in this area extremely important. The same applies when one day we come to autonomous driving. It's all about trust. I mean, you might have a strange feeling when you enter a car and there's no driver sitting in there. And then you are in the hands of the one who offers that service. And we think we're in a very good position to do that. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at this, we can offer our customers two very, very strong brands. We can offer them great products. Yeah? If you have a car sharing on a nice day with blue sky in Upper Bavaria, for example, you enjoy the convertibles. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Who else can do that? Yeah? And the mini convertibles are always booked on a, on a nice day on a, at mm. the weekend. So we have great pr brands, we have great products, and uh, we found out we have together great people. And strong products, strong brands, tr good people, and uh, good processes, and having the right business attitude, that makes the difference. Yeah. And, and if you think about there's one more. We can combine the hardware and the software. We know how the car needs to drive around the corner. The motion control is in our hand. That's in, that is a competence which not met every company has. What do you mean? That's very interesting. What do you mean by that? That means a Mini must drive like a Mini around the corner. Mm -hmm. That is the software. That is the DNA. That is the knowledge, how motion control, how the car behaves for years and years of experience. Hmm. Yeah. Or safety, for example. We know how to design a car that it's absolutely safe. This is knowledge which you need in our today's world as well, together with the software. There are many businesses where digitalization transforms the business entirely. So uh, you don't need a disc or anything to stream music. You don't need paper to uh, convert uh, information. In our case, it's different. As long as people and goods can't be beamed, and I guess this will take some time, we need some physical envelope to get from A to B. Yeah. And that's where our strength lies. And we do much more than envelopes. We do beautiful packages uh, mm -hmm. with a lot of great content, uh, very emotional. 
And that's where our strength lies. And with all respect to all the tech companies, who of course have more strength on the tech side than we do, but we're building up pretty fast, uh, that is our strength, our source, and that's where we ultimately in the mobility business uh, are in the pool position. Yeah, and we are the companies who are driving innovations. Yeah? Some of the most important uh, innovations in the automotive business, like head units, uh, like safety systems, are coming from both companies. Yeah, you know, many of the mobility companies have gotten into a lot of trouble by trying to work around the governments. I'm sure you guys heard quite a bit about this, your understanding of this. Lime, Uber in London, how will you guys partner with regulators? I mean, you need to partner in, in being in the dialogue with regulators, with governments, with the communities, and we shouldn't underestimate the cities, yeah? so the big cities, and we do this together in, in all of these areas. This will be also one approach of the company we can have. We can offer cities complete mobility solutions for the future, yeah? charging infrastructure. We can offer them uh, digital parking yeah? to make it more efficient. We can offer them uh, other things in terms of mobility concepts. So that's why we are different. That's why we find a complete solution compared to other mobility companies, not just one single piece. And the other one is that uh, we will deliver what we promise. And with the governments, we are always in close contact. We're working closely. You need to do that in every country of the world, with the cities, with the governments, with the authorities, and the regulators. And the principle for us is based on what Dieter said. The customer needs to trust us. The trust is the most important point in this data business that we keep on a close eye on what's going on. I mean, um, it's in this kind of mobility is mostly about uh, communities, about the metropolitan areas. And we have a very, very long history uh, with our uh, bus operations, where we operate uh, closely with uh, communities around the globe. Uh, Movil uh, was based on that experience that you can't compete with mass transit. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, to try to uh, find a different offering than the uh, city governments are asking for but we cooperate, and uh, that is the basis of our philosophy, and this is the difference to some other approaches which has been used, and I think it will be more successful. I think we are a good partner for cities and for governments, and we have proven that. Mm. Well, so we've heard version 1.0, that's what you guys are kind of announcing today, so let's look to the future at what the next version of this looks like. What does this look like down the, down the line? I mean, I kind of portrayed that before. Uh, first of all, this business is about growth. So clearly with a very strong equity base, um, both of us um, are uh, decided to go for growth, to uh, go for number one positions where possible. That will not be possible everywhere, but in many uh, continents and parts of these five verticals. Um, and then we are, we are thinking into the further technological transformation, as I mentioned before, that ultimately all of this will melt. Uh, together. Uh, this might even uh, include the third dimension. Uh, we are invested in Volocopter, uh, which is on demand, mo mobility, autonomous mobility mm -hmm. in the air. Uh, this might become part of that uh, combined activity in the future, and I don't think we have to look too far down the road to get there. So ultimately, uh, we see the comprehensive, um, integrated offering of individual mobility on demand with a fingertip, integrated in, in one app at the end, which offers you the whole uh, variety of possibilities to get, get from A to B um, from the best uh, partner you can ask for. Yeah, and, and Dieter's absolutely right. Yeah? It's, and this with a premium product, with emotional services, yeah? with perfect professional delivery, yeah? with services which uh, the customer is happy about, and is maybe surprising the customer, and uh, being a company who is absolutely customer on, and business orientated, mm -hmm. yeah, and showing growth, uh, showing excitement about the future. And uh, I'm sure the vision is we will supply the mobility of the future. Do you worry about disrupting your core business? Again, you said in your introduction already, uh, when you uh, see change and you think you can uh, tackle it by trying to avoid it, you are lost. So um, while on the one hand we are absolutely convinced that uh, ownership, uh, car ownership, and uh, people driving their cars 
will be around for decades and perhaps even centuries in the vast major uh, majority of uh, mobility activities. There is a growing segment, uh, which some people see at 20% of total mobility or whatever in some years to come, uh, which uh, we cannot just ignore. Uh, we want to uh, design that change from the lead. We want to be part of the definition of this future, and uh, we will see how our business models will develop in this field and how ultimately we can support our uh, shareholder value uh, within these activities. But this transformation should be pioneered by us and not watched from the sideline. Yeah, and uh, I agree. Uh, I mean, we still focus very much on our core business and that's absolutely important. But with this, I'm sure, I'm totally convinced, Laurie, that in 10 mm. years time, we will look back, this was an important day today mm. for mobility of the future. I'm absolutely convinced. And because we will have then both sides of our business, and if you would like to trans survive in the digital transformation of our business, you ne need to have both. You need the cars and the products with the right technology, the core business, and you need to have the mobility services of the future. Uh, it, it goes hand in hand. Um, we've got, I wanna wrap it soon because I wanna get to Q and A, and I know a lot of folks have questions. Um, so quickly, you know, as leaders of these well-known legacy companies in the era of technology, these partnerships sounds great now, but like, let's take me to, to honestly, I mean, how have you had to personally change your mindset and how you think about your business? Was it difficult? I mean, I hear two uh, parts of the question in what you're saying. The one was being strong competitors for decades and deciding to go in a very significant, important area um, in a combined way. Um, and uh, I mean, there's this, this buzzword of frenemies. Mm -hmm. um, we never have been enemies, but of course we are competitors. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is not a contradiction at all, that on the one hand, you agree that you will compete for every single customer in the area of premium luxury uh, mobility, and on the other hand, you join forces <laughs> to um, compete with other big companies out there to be together the leaders in this field. And I think that is the perfect world that you can do both at the same time, and therefore in our management board it was uh, pretty fast that we came to the conclusion that's the right thing to do. You were asking, and I don't want to expand on that, I think on the transformation of our businesses culturally into the digital world altogether, which is a um, challenge for both of us in our own companies, and there we have our own uh, path to get there, and in this combined company, it will join. And, I mean, competition makes us stronger, yeah? We love it. <laughs> and it was both good for both companies, yeah? And if you're driving the other products from the other company, you learn and you uh, think, well, this is good, and that in this part, your product or your own product is better. But for some business like the mobility services, you need to have a reasonable size. Hmm. You need to be a scalable business. Yeah? And, and that's where we were convinced that we both together can conquer the rest. Yeah? Yeah. And, and, uh, and that we have a good chance with that foundation by which we put in place by today and with the right people in, on the job, with the right foundation for the structure, with the freedom and framework we created that we will be together successful in this business because today's business is about tough competition and strategic cooperation where it makes sense, win-wins. I, I guess the, the, the real question is, what will you do, Harold, if through uh, services, if through now services you're sent, or Mercedes and you, Dieter, if you end up with a BMW, will you get in? Of course, of course, we do that as do Harold that just mentioned in our test drive anyway. <laughs> um, and I'll gladly drive the, Mercedes, the BMW in this case, then which arrives first, potentially. Uh, and then I'm glad when I'm getting home and know that my Mercedes waits there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, um, I want to give everyone the opportunity to ask questions, so I'm going to open it up to Q&A. Um, Dieter and Harold will answer questions specifically about today's news, so let's open it up. Sure. In the middle. Uh, thank you. Uh, Christian Hetzner, Automotive News Europe. Uh, I had three questions. Uh, first off, uh, as far as the 60 million combined customers are concerned, can you tell us what sort of average revenue per user they actually generate, how valuable these customers are, uh, and uh, on the financial aspect, uh, how profitable are these uh, five different businesses? 
Uh, you mentioned a 1 billion euro investment. Uh, could you say how long that investment lasts? Is that uh, for a period of three years or five years, or how soon will you need to um, inject further capital into the operation? And then lastly, the name Uber came up. Um, being one of the most valuable unicorns in the world, it nonetheless had, I believe, a $1 billion quarterly loss most recently. OEMs are notoriously bad when it comes to patience needed for sustainable profitability in this area of business. Uh, would you consider floating a portion of this joint venture onto the stock exchange to allow institutional investors uh, to become a part of this, uh, oftentimes they have a longer uh, patience when it comes to uh, sustainable profitability in this area than OEMs. Thank you. To your first question, there is uh, a typical way how to calculate the value based on per customer um, revenues and, and provisions you make. And when we do this calculation, the combined business at that point of time uh, are in the vicinity of three billion uh, right now of course, with the objective to grow fast. Um, to the last point, um, we are just starting new business together. We do that together, and we want to grow it together, and there are no further plans at that point of time as far as IPO or anything like that is concerned. Dieter is absolutely right. We, we are planning to make this journey successful together. There was one question in the middle. Does either one? Uh, till it's gone. Uh, <laughs> 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 we are there for growth. It's, it's simple to answer. The CEOs of the verticals are now having the task to plan for the future. And in the next three months, the next three, four months, they are all coming up with a business plan, uh, with uh, a new business plan which we will review and then we look at the future investments. But the first task is now that the CEOs uh, giving us in three, four months back a business plan, an updated revised version, then when we will recalculate. But uh, it depends on how successful the business can grow. Great. Any other questions? In the back. Hey, my name is Christina Kiriasoglu from Manager Magazine. Can you um, share if you're concerned about what SIXT is planning and maybe share some revenue expectations. Thank you. Well, um, to the latter one, I think you should wait for the next uh, press conference uh, from Sixt. Mm. Um, we tell you what we are planning. Um, and um, as far as our revenue playing are concerned, um, Harald just said it. Yeah. Uh, of course, the, the um, merging of these two businesses was based on business plans in every single element of their separate companies before. Now they're merged, now we need for the verticals the combined business plans. Um, and uh, this is not then only a question about investments which might be needed and not in all cases planned by us for the next five years because tomorrow something, an opportunity might come around a corner where we might get a proposal and we say, well, go for it or not, we'll see. Um, and um, this, of course, the investment have to go together with, uh, with revenues. Uh, and once again, we are aware that especially the ride hailing business is a business uh, where scale matters and uh, where you have to grow fast uh, because the positions will be defined in the next two, three, four years and not in 10 and 20 years. Therefore, um, the revenue growth, the growth of customers is very important, but always in an economical, prudent way, and this is where we consent them. Sure, go ahead. Hi, Oliver Zaka with Bloomberg News. Uh, Mr. Chetza, in the, your press release, you said that you're looking at potentially acquiring uh, some startups or other players in this field. Um, you've just kind of gotten a bunch of fields together, a bunch of areas. Where are you still weak? Where do you still need to basically make acquisitions? Um, I would say every one of the CEOs of these verticals has its experience already in his or her respective um, vertical um, and has some ideas about the competitors and the landscape as well. Um, at that point of time, we have no specific plans uh, what we'll do uh, next. Um, this might pop up 
in a week from now, this might be in four or five months, but I think today is not the day to discuss specific uh, targets. Uh, we are pretty strong. Yes, of course, we have areas where we uh, can gain uh, further strength as well, and these are then op uh, obviously the ones where we're looking for, but I would not uh, try to define them right now, the, the potential weaker points. Okay. Yeah. Uh, William Boston okay. from the Wall Street Journal. I just wanted to follow up on the, my colleague's question about acquisitions. Um, other than technology, you know, filling out the gaps in, in, in your uh, technical capabilities <laughs> and know-how, what about uh, uh, making acquisitions for market share? Um, you know, do you expect there to be consolidation with some other players, uh, uh, particularly you know, regional players where uh, your business now is absent or not, not large? Uh, will, will you, you know, be looking to acquire other companies in this area like, you know, Lyft, um, do big uh, ventures with uh, other uh, companies like Didi, uh, or do you want to make, um, you know, acquisitions and grow in those markets? So buying market share, is that a strategy? I think that depends on the vertical. Yeah. When you see um, our sharing activities, both of us have grown uh, by our own strength without any acquisitions. On the other hand, my taxi is a history of acquisitions. Of course, with strong um, growth by the entities uh, we had in the beginning, but by acquisition as well. And yeah. this will, I guess, very much define our future as well. In this mobility area of ride hailing, uh, I'm pretty sure that we will discuss and agree together about future acquisitions yeah. as well. And it comes back to the point that now the business units and the five verticals will come up with the updated business plan. This includes competition, regional uh, situation, do we need to attack regional-wise, what do we do seems in profitable growth, how can we gain more customers. So it's clearly a question which we will explore in the next three to four months and then we come up with the next steps. Yeah? And uh, think about in one or the other, we are already very strong. Yeah? In the digital parking, for example, there's not many other companies who are as strong as we are by today. And, and, we need, and then we look into the regional situation. So that will be step by step, but that's now the nice task of the CEOs. <laughs> Go ahead. Nikolaus Doll, Die Welt. Uh, these five today presented verticals are focused on technologies for the future, but there is no one for autonomous driving. So are there any plans to cooperate in this point too? I think it would make sense to do, the, to do so. I think, <laughs> I mean, answer, well, whoever wants, uh, uh, I think we have the same view on this one. Uh, we have a good cooperation on the component sides, BMW and, and Daimler. And we started now today a new joint venture on the five verticals, and that's another good step. And that is our main focus now. I mean, um, take sharing. Uh, today there are minis, there are BMWs, there are smarts, there are Mercedes. Uh, we do not have to talk about these cars to use them on the platform in a meaningful way. Um, as we said before, over time, uh, these platforms uh, will uh, merge and um, be the basis for autonomous uh, ride hailing um, services. Um, we are building the platform in this joint venture together and what products will be operated on this platform is open. This can be um, products from BMW, can be products from us, can be products from third parties or theoretically things we would have looked into together, but that's totally open today. We're talking about the platform. Max Hegler from the Süddeutschen. Grüß Sie. Uh, just two questions um, uh, concerning the autonomous driving. Um, and which level of um, yeah. engagement or combined work are you uh, at, the, at the moment now? Are you working together in this field or not? And the other is um, you're both coming from the premium segment, from the luxury segment, now entering the volume segment for the most people for the mid middle class. Is this a problem? This could be a problem or not? I start with the second question and then we can answer the first one. Uh, the, with the premium on the mass segment, it's not a problem. 
because we still offer and deliver in our joint ventures, in our verticals, premium services and premium products. Yeah? That is the clear focus on this one, that's how we would like to differentiate. Yeah? And uh, uh, we're still having our core brands included there. So that focus is still on what we believe is premium and emotional side. Yeah? And step by step, we will learn. The first question I think uh, I've asked, uh, answered in the question before already, and at that point of time we don't have to elaborate more in this field. And uh, second, I totally agree. I've never seen it as a problem that we're in the premium segment. I see it as a best uh, um, a character of our business we are both in because it's such an attractive business. Premium doesn't mean exclusivity today. We combined have five million products, which is not really small. Um, and um, when we are looking forward, um, some people say you will on only have uh, boxes where people in these autonomous sharing platforms get from A to B. Other people say, well, the per mile incremental cost of a premium product versus a volume product is minimal, is almost irrelevant. And even in these uh, platforms, when you now share the asset or use the asset for 10, 12 hours per day versus one hour per day, um, premium becomes much more affordable. And it's still nicer for people to use a premium product than just a, a box of, of sheet metal. And therefore, it might be that the share of premium gets even bigger yeah. because it's more affordable in these uh, kind of, this all, speculation at that point of time. And but I'm not afraid at all that our uh, very favorable position to be in the premium business would not be an advantage in this future, future development either. And we had customers, Mr. Higler, also in, in the car sharing services, which started as a car sharing customer. And later on, they were uh, driving or owning or leasing a vehicle, uh, a mini or a smart or whatever. So we know that customers are already changing to the life and in terms of from maybe just becoming or uh, just being uh, somebody who's using car sharing or ride hailing to be own a car when they move on. So you find all sorts. That's why we will offer that variety clearly focused on premium. Yeah, but clearly, as I mentioned before, we will also include, for example, the opportunity that the customer has a seamless traveling booking yeah, from the car to the airplane, to the car sharing, to the hotel. Yeah. So, and that is premium again, if the customer has a seamless journey. In Stülfase, in Telika, um, this week um, Berliner Verkehrsbetriebe unveiled Jelby, their mobility platform, with a long list of partners, but I missed uh, Daimler and BMW car sharing. Will, you, will the new five brands partners of this new platform or... Will it compete? Uh, we have combined almost all um, activities which both sides um, have in this area uh, within the new five uh, combined verticals with some exceptions. And these exceptions uh, have some reasons which we agree upon. Uh, let's just take one example. Uh, we just announced most recently a premium uh, sharing model in China uh, with our shareholder. Um, this is not even, hasn't even started. Uh, so to put that into this combined activity at that point of time would have been premature and only make made it more uh, difficult. So we said, let's go there, see how it develops. Uh, we are open, transparent, we discuss, and at some point of time we we'll, might have a combined China strategy and this might be part of it or not. Uh, not. And this is true for other areas where Smaller activities are still outside, perfectly fine. That is what I would call the exciting part of our business that you don't know the answer by today. <laughs> Hello, Martin Grob, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Sorry for disturbing the view on uh, the future and your thoughts, but um, can you share with us your sentiments of view on the present as well and uh, especially concerning the newest notions from Washington concerning tariffs um, on auto exports to the United States. Thanks. So, 
you were not successful in disturbing our view for the future, uh, but it's true that beyond or before the future we have the presence as well. Um, we together had individually and uh, combined as well, as far as uh, antitrust allows that, uh, discussions uh, with uh, the administration in, in the S. Um, and uh, these discussions were developing positively so far. We are not in a final conclusion. And uh, therefore, um, we are sure that um, <clears throat> these were, um, these discussions reduce the risk of um, disruptive changes in the environment, specifically customs, uh, but it's not zero. So, of course, we are continuing and it's ongoing in order to find a solution which for all parties involved uh, would be positive, um, but we ha don't have the final uh, answer today. Uh, and we are clearly in favor of free trade. <coughs> uh, our business models uh, do require free trade and also requires that we are having good operations in the big <coughs> regions. Yeah? I mean, we are together one of the biggest investors in the United States. Yeah? And having a lot of jobs in the United States, and that is also based on free trade. And together, uh, bigger car um, exporter in, <coughs> in from the US than any other company, uh, even every one single of us is uh, bigger than the others and combined, uh, no one else is in this region. I think we have time for one more question. There's many others. Yeah, Michael Gerster, Automobilwoche. Um, apart from the new five uh, verticals, you still have uh, mobility units within your companies based, for example, within uh, financial services. Uh, what will be the relationship uh, between all these entities in a daily working process? I think we have already answered that. First of all, the <coughs> activities which we put into this combined uh, new um, adventure um, were mostly out of financial services on our side as well. Um, and I said before that for a specific reason in every single case, and there are not too many, um, they remain, some of them remain at that point of time outside of their combined activity. This might change tomorrow, and that's, as we just heard, the excitement of our jobs that we don't know all answers to the questions today. Great. Um, quick logistics. We're going to do a quick photo op on, on stage and continue with a short coffee break, and then there'll be individual interviews. And around 12.15, the new CEOs will be giving more information on the five different units and 10-minute presentation. So uh, you can find your individual group on your badge if you take a look, and you'll see a hostess uh, with your group's number in the right workshop area around 12.10. So thank you, guys, if you want to get up and take a photo. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. And uh, we'd also like to ask the vertical CEOs who will be responsible for the NOW services to, to also come on stage for a, a picture as well and join everybody. Tell me when and I can get up there. Okay. You want to go up? Okay. Great. Awesome. Thank you guys for coming and we'll see you in the workshops. Thank you guys.